Hello and welcome to my present. Today for the second episode of Starter Base Architecture, we're going to be talking about Mesoamerican architecture. Now that's kind of a sweeping generalization because the Mesoamericans had a lot of distinct cultures, but I'm not qualified to talk about that because I haven't done the research, which is why this video is brought to you today by Overly Sarcastic Productions. They haven't paid me and aren't affiliated with this video, but they have done the research and have put out some, a couple of very good videos about Mesoamerican cultures, including this one linked up in the cards and down below in the description. It's a really good video and I highly recommend checking that channel out if you haven't watched them already. With that out of the way, it's time to get into Mesoamerican architecture in Minecraft. And the first place that that leads us is the Jungle Temple as the closest approximation in vanilla Minecraft. So this is the Jungle Temple or Jungle Pyramid. It's primarily built out of cobble and mossy cobble and has been in the game for a very long time, all the way back in 1.3.1 was when this was added. Uh, you often won't see it in this full kind of form because since it spawns in jungles, it's going to be covered in the kind of trees and bushes of the jungle biome in Minecraft. So you likely won't see it go this deep as a lot of this will be under the either the tree cover or under the ground. And if we go in, it's fairly dark. It's very small. There's technically three layers, but the layer most people care about is this layer down here with a series of things to pull and solve down here and traps with dispensers and arrows and trip wires all the way through here. Now this kind of fits more into the Indiana Jones type of ancient ruins type thing and less the, um, like the actual Mesoamerican architecture, which is something we're going to try and rectify going forward in this build. But one thing that we can take away is this kind of cobble and mossy cobble color scheme, especially when combined with mossy bricks and those type of other blocks can be a really good way to achieve that kind of decayed in a jungle look, even if though that's not what we're going to be doing for our full build today. And now that we've gone through the vanilla build here, it's time to get working on our own. For this one, I'm going to be showing a new skill off. We're going to be working with gradients. Gradients are a great way to get more life in your build, especially in builds where there's not a predominant accent color that you want to be using. For our build here, I'm going to be going away from the kind of jungle style and up more into the mountains, more of the Mayan types, where it's a lot more stone based and specifically a lot more of these whiter stone bases up here. You can do this type of style of build in a lot of different color palettes and it will end up working out because again, the Mesoamerican culture spanned a very large area, which led into the issues that I already addressed. But for example, if you wanted to do something like Mesa Verde, you could use some of the pyramid colors that we used in the last episode in order to get that kind of decayed in a desert look. Uh, we're going to be going for a decayed in the mountains look here, while this one is more of a decayed in a jungle and you would throw in things like leaves and things like that. But for our purposes here, we're going to be going for more of a embedded in a mountaintop type of feel. That, we're going to hop over here and get right on into the time lapse with these blocks and a lot of terraforming. Starting off, we're going to be laying out our foundations just like we did for our pyramid. It's a really good way to start and well, I'll be going over some methods in other videos of how to start out without specifically the wool. This is a tried and true method that's recommended by the best, so this is the one that I prefer to use whenever I'm doing it. Now you might see here that a lot of the things I'm laying out aren't quite the square Minecrafty types of shapes, and that's because I really stretched myself on this one to go more in an organic direction and try my hand at some terraforming. In our super flat build worlds here, we don't have any mountains or plateaus to build on, so I am going to have to be building that out myself. So you see me laying out that, as well as different layers for this build and different towers and structures that I'm going to be building on the different layers. As we're getting into finishing up our layouts here, 
it's probably time to start talking a little bit about the cultures that inspired this and the architectural feats that they achieved. For one thing, in that overly sarcastic productions video, they talk about the city built on a lake because they felt that they had received a vision from a deity that they should build a city on the lake, and so they did. It was an incredible feat which has been lost to time and conquistadors, which is truly a great travesty, and a lot of the history of those places was burned in one of the libraries in that city, which is truly a shame. And while I think a lot of people know about the burning of the Library of Alexandria in Egypt, I don't think as many people know about this burning, so highly recommend checking out that overly sarcastic production video, and it is a lot of fun and I learned a lot. Now you see us laying out the first kind of wall. I'm starting this in just kind of the general stone shape and I'm then going through and putting the gradient on it. The way I'm doing the gradient is I'm just kind of laying out wide bands of the colors and then I'm going to go through and break it up so that it doesn't seem specifically like bands. But I find that laying out the bands in the specific ways is a really good way of not having to go back and destroy it later and kind of get that feel as it goes up of it changing. Now I had to go back and destroy it because I am bad at counting numbers, so I had miscounted and needed to re-count out my walls so that I had the two block center that I was looking for for this kind of central staircase area that we're going to have. Now as we're zooming in here you can see that kind of gradient that we're going for and a lot of these Mesoamerican builds will have that very white gradient feel and as you go up it will get to different colors. I specifically wanted to highlight that gradient and accentuate it a little bit more in this build and so also try to tell a story with it where the top parts have been a little bit more weathered and even if other things could have happened, things could have fallen over, you can still see what would have been higher up in the depth. Now, Mesoamerican cultures were there for an incredibly long time and for over 3,000 years before Europeans discovered America, complex societies had already been established across the American continents. They had as many full stories and cities and cultures as anywhere else in the world, and much of that has been lost to time. And that is truly a shame. One of the great things about architecture, though, is even when a lot of other things are lost, architecture is one of the things that often remains. What we have then from this architecture is a lot of sprawl of cities and central plazas with government buildings and temples, public courts, or tlachtli on raised platforms. Pyramids were also a dominant feature due to their sheer size alone. Now, many of the most famous of the Mesoamerican architecture that remains is in Mexico. Specifically, some of the best known sites are the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, both built around 200 CE, 200 to 50 CE. The Castillo at Chichen Itza and largest of all, the Great Pyramid at Cholula, which is was built around 300 BCE to about 900 CE. The dates, of course, are going to be a little bit more rough because we don't have those written records that we would love to have to know that much more about these cultures. Another example which is well known is Machu Picchu, which is up in Peru. Now, it's situated on a mountain ridge 2,430 meters above sea level, and it's definitely an inspiration for this build. Uh, it specifically has that kind of gradient of weathering with the darker colors being more towards the bottom. Part of this is because it is built on granite constructed with stro stones that fit together so that you have that kind of layering effect. Now I did not try to get the semicircle feel to it as that is difficult to do in Minecraft but I did 
attribute this tower you see me laying the base out of here in kind of that style. Now as we kind of transition this build into the later part where we finished off the terraforming, I do want to have a little note about the terraforming, which is that a lot of it, especially when you're going for that more stereotypical Minecraft style, is just placing blocks and going back and adjusting it, which is a lot of what that first time last was. And so a lot of me learning that terraforming for this video was just kind of placing what felt right and then going back and going over it again and again until I arrived at a finished product that I'm okay with, which is truly part of any creative process. Now here you see me doing the same with this kind of fallen tower that I have on the ground here. And I've tried to get that gradient where it looks like it starts on the right side, kind of right middle of our screen here, and fell over to that kind of leftward area. So it looks like it kind of fell over that way. And we have the other one on the other side that fell again kind of towards this more central area where it gets lighter as it goes up, or it would have, but now it is on the ground, but you can still kind of get the story that is being told by that, which is a really cool part of having a gradient, especially in using it in other parts of the build. By having elevation be linked to the color, having things that break away from that can be a really useful way to complete the story you're trying to tell. Now I struggled with this tower a lot, specifically with how decayed I wanted it to be, and I ended up going with a lot less decayed than I originally thought looking at the images of Machu Picchu, because a lot of the kind of wonder in it is how well a lot of it is still preserved to this day. So going in and kind of getting it to match more with that, having them different kinds of layers, and still being relatively well preserved was something I really wanted to do well here. Building a tower in this style was very interesting because I kind of freestyled this a little bit looking off of the reference images that I had from the short story of architecture by Susie Hodge, who is the person whose architecture book we are essentially doing a book review on and making this series. So using some of the images from this book, I tried to recreate it in Minecraft in a way that felt genuine. And a lot of the stair use that you're seeing here is trying to recreate the kind of layers and feel of the images that I'm seeing. And I think, I wish I could, I probably could have gone more into a circular style to get that feel a little bit better, but I am I am happy with how it turned out as a build, especially given that it's such a prominent center point in the build. And that's another thing to mention when building in any kind of base or starter base, having things to draw the eye from the outside is going to help with the structure of your build as, the, as a whole. For example, in this build, this area that we're seeing come into the screen on the bottom here is where the base, like, essentials are predominantly going to be. Having a sorting system, any kind of redstone farm is going to be down underneath. So having that kind of interesting focal point on the top is very important for having that kind of starter base feel, which if you're building a starter base and if you're watching this video, is hopefully something that you're going to want to try to achieve. Another point with this build is how I tried to incorporate it into the, I guess I could call it unnatural landscape since I built it in this time lapse, but having it kind of sit snugly and within the nature that it's on, kind of a part of the mountain instead of just stacked upon it, is something that I tried to get well with this build. I don't know how well I accomplished it. I think having more mountains around in the background would definitely be a way to help with that, but that kind of pushes away from the starter base architecture feel. If you wanted to go into more of a mega base, more of a hermit craft style, bigger build type of thing for this, the way to do that would be to 
do more terraforming around it and build out instead of just one or two structures more of a city as a whole which would be a really cool thing and if anyone has done that or is inspired by this video to do that please let me know send it to me i would love to see that and i'm sure it will turn out great and now we're reaching the end of our time lapse here but there are some more things i added on and some things that i'd love to talk about that i would do differently if i were to build this again from scratch now one thing i like from this vantage point is how imposing and tall it looks as a structure because it is from ground level very big for a starter base which i knew going in but i really wanted to do this justice and here after we arrive at the stairs which i do like and tried to get that good gradient on we arrive at the first thing that i would change which is this path right here uh, i would love to incorporate some of the gravel and make this into a bit of a better path um, the problem is this is one layer of dirt so I would have done that differently or done it on an actual Minecraft terrain so that it's much easier to terraform on top of this with things like clay, with like concrete powder and gravel to where I don't have to worry about it falling into the void below. I am happy with how this one turned out as a whole. I do love this little pool of water in here for falling down into it which was something that you may have seen in the time lapse. I theorized with having water fall down the whole thing, but I'm glad I went away from this and ended up on this little bit of an approach. And now we get into the thing that I did not show, which is our kind of base in here. Now it's very dark. I have tried to do the fog effect which I probably needed a couple more layers to get truly get that good fog effect going all the way down. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, one thing I would do if I were to turn this into an actual base, this would mainly be the uh, sorting area room with offshoots to different farms and that type of stuff. And I would refine this kind of growth thing that I added to kind of give it some ambiance into more of a Mesoamerican style inspired thing, which most likely given the wide breadth, I probably would have gone with a Quetzalcoatl theme, or which is the feathered serpent, which is one of the things, one of the kind of deities which really was near universal across the Americas in that time period. So that would have been a very good pick for detailing this and I definitely would have put more lanterns, fixed up the ceiling, and done the fog effect better, had more layers instead of just the two that I have here. I believe if you want to do this effect right, where you have the glass, then air, then glass, you need about seven to get that truly good fog effect going all the way down. And if I were to do that, I would have extended the stairs and had all those things so that things could have been lost in the fog down there and to achieve a really cool effect all in all though i am truly ecstatic with how this whole build turned out this is my first real attempt at terraforming something on this scale so i was really happy to be able to work in the more organics and get something that i at the end of the day i'm really proud of having built so thank you all so much for watching and apologies for the delay on this one Dealing with the kind of struggle of trying to represent a large swath of cultures took a lot out of me in making this video, but hopefully going forward I'll be able to stick with either a bi weekly or bi-weekly video, so if you want to see more like these, please hit the subscribe button and I will be putting out more videos like this in the future. So thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in the future.